Live from Lincoln Center in the heart of the Dallas Metroplex, this is Nip Talk. An honest and uncensored show about plastic surgery, health, beauty, and lifestyle. With your host, plastic surgeon Dr. Bruce Herman, and your co-host, actress, syndicated radio host, and social media influencer Jasmine Sadry. Now it's time to discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of the topics everyone is talking about. It's time for Nip Talk. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nip Talk. For all those watching us live and on recording, we do want to thank you, and we really do appreciate it. I am your host, plastic surgeon Dr. Bruce Herman, and with me, as always, is the on point, the on point. Jasmine Sadri. Uh, kudos to your thesaurus you have under your chair. We're going to just call me. <laughs> I have I, one of those calendars. It's like uh, the yeah, word of the day. I just feel like the words are going to continuously change. They may not be as nice you know, after. You can see the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the box, as always, is Trelvis, our studio producer. What's up, Trelvis? What's going on? What's going on? What's up, Trelvis? Y'all like, have, have a very vast vocabulary, I think is how you put it. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very vast. I love those everywhere. calendars. It's the word of the day. Vast. Mine's yeah. more sailor. <laughs> it's actually a shock I that I I do and speak French. fluent sailor. I do. It gets the friends. job done. I bet it you does. Yep. Yeah. So Jasmine, uh, have you done anything exciting over the past week? Any you know cool outings or anything? Uh, okay. So like, oh my gosh. Well, yes. Okay. okay. So the one because I like I have such foggy brain. I don't know if it's just all of us now where you're just like in this yeah. like I can't remember what I did, but I did do something super fun. Okay. So one of my favorite jewelers on the entire planet is Kendra Scott. Okay. Um, and they are now doing this collaboration with Somersault. Have you heard of Somersault? I haven't. They're Tell a me, I'm they're a swimming curious. line wearer. Okay. Uh, swim line wear, swimwear line, sweet brain, <laughs> swim line wear, swimwear line. And they did this really cool collaboration. So they had this party at La Bille Bouquet um, Ooh, in swanky. Dallas. Yeah, it's it wow. was super awesome. And um, so, yeah, we were like sipping and seeing and nice. looking at jewelry all and people. all the beautiful people. <laughs> that is the nice thing about Dallas. I tell you is like there are places you'll go out and like people in Dallas like to like look their best. And, and I appreciate we're that. We're petty. It's not like that everywhere. I've no, lived it's in not. A lot of different cities. No, it's not. We're yeah. super petty, but I'll own it. Yeah. Like I say I'm on my, too, like, but I, on my bio, I say I'm a Dallas girl. When by we trade. like go it's out, like I'm always about like I can make my outfit look good. I, you guys always see me in scrubs. Like when I go out, I'm like, you mm -hmm. know, I like to dress up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's your very Dallas. So um, I actually did something pretty cool uh, last. Well, it's a weekend before last, but recently mm -hmm. um, we went to Carte Blanche. Have you heard of that? I have, and I'm so cynical about this place. Oh, you have really? tried to talk to me oh, about this my restaurant. Gosh. It's about to go down. Well, and it's funny because my boyfriend Joey was like, "Ooh, have you checked this place out?" And it looks great on Instagram. Then I was like, "Like, listen, no." Hey, carte blanche but i was like first of all slow your roll on your prices way too expensive so i just read an article that they are in the top five most expensive restaurants in dallas but i okay but for something that's like this okay, big, well, like me, 12 of those let me tell you and trailvis is gonna roll some i want bang pictures. for my buck yeah so there's gonna roll some pictures of us there but um so we did the chef's master tasting menu which is basically a 12 course meal and we this did, big it is small but you can't you can't get 12 like you know, supersized portions, like you you die of like- That's a shot. I mean, they are, some of them are small. They are small. Yeah, but for like a couple hundo. Okay, so I will tell you, 12 courses of small dishes, I did leave feeling full, okay? But Which is the, what we should humanly do. We're just gluttonous. I'm it's just gluttonous. the experience of it. So I, let me tell you about this about carte blanche, and then there's something else we're gonna have to unpack about them if we have the time. Okay. I thought the food was really good. It was a little bit exotic at times. Like they had like elk and antelope and like wild boar, but like it was all good. But I mean, it was just a little bit different than other tasting menus I've had. But I do want to say that their customer service and their presentation was like perfect. I like, hope for what you're paying. Well, I mean, you would think that, but like, I mean, I my wife and I are foodies, right? Mm -hmm. So like, this is like our thing. Like we don't like, you know, I don't play golf. Like she doesn't like go to the spa all the time. Like we like to go and have like mm -hmm. dinner experiences, sure. like a tasting menu pairing with the wine. Sure. And so we've done this a lot. And I will tell you, like this one really stood out to me is like, like everything was a presentation. Like it was like the people came up, like they told you about what it was. Like, I mean, it definitely was a customer service oriented experience, which is not always the case. No, it's not. You know, what shocked me was the fact that this is the only 
five star, categorically five star. Forbes five star. In the, the state of Texas, the and there's so Ford. many fantastic restaurants are, in the man. entire and state. I, That's I, why I could was talk like, about all of them like for so long. No way! But, but then, okay, so I saw this, and I was like, man, whatever on the price. And then I saw this op-ed. It not, it's not cheap. Okay, I saw this op-ed in the Dallas Morning News. I and know I'm not, where you're going with I, this. Okay, so now, and I'm not one to go, well, they said it, so I believe it. It was just kind of reinforcing what I thought this specific writer was mm -hmm. talking about. Like, it's if you're expecting some like oh experience, I mean they need to like try again for what you're paying. It's just so I would just like I thought I thought you were going somewhere else. That I would disagree with that. Like it was not cheap, but like I, I felt like that it was on par with similar experience of that level. Like this is not something that you don't go do this chef's you know tour on a Tuesday night. This is like an anniversary or like a special night out. I mean, it is pricey. I mean, you're paying for the experience. But, but I'm saying like pricey. I uh, Let's go to Nick and Sam's. I do love, oh man, I love some, but let me tell you about Nick and Sorry, Sam's though. Lunch. Like, I mean, not to like go too far on the restaurant rabbit hole, but like, I mean, it's it, it's very crowded. Like the, the, it's a see the beautiful people place, but it's also a very loud crowded mm -hmm. place. But the food, I love The Nick food is insanely me, good. Back to carte blanche. Did you hear about uh, Casey LaRue? There was an article recently in one of the Dallas you know, publications that now said- who's Casey LaRue? Oh, I'm sorry. He's the uh, chef and owner okay. of Carte Blanche. Okay. That, I apologize, that uh, that he kind of padded his resume. Shock. So I dig in. So you know how I am. You need to pad your menu. You know how I am. I, I just don't take the, I dig. I'm, yeah. I'm out there digging, You're a right? doctor. So I'm show like, me the facts. Show me the money, right? So I dug into this. And so apparently what he did is when he was, kind of, and he was not classically trained. He didn't go to culinary school. He like worked his way up from dishwasher to like assistant, you know, whatever, to eventually a chef. And while he was doing that working on the East Coast, on his days off, he would apparently like go into New York City and, and do what's called staging. So staging sure. is where, I, I, this was a new thing to me, I didn't mm -hmm. know, but like you basically go to a restaurant and you work for free just for the experience. Sure. So he did that at some pretty famous places. And then when he like, you know, was making his website for Carte Blanche, he's mm -hmm. like, oh, I've trained under these people. And like, you know, technically mm -hmm. it's true. Listen, I mean, look, I can appreciate the hustle game of bending words to fit like the truth of what happened, right? He, he did do all that, right? But then kind of bending the words to fit. And listen, everybody does it. It's it's hustle. I have nothing against the hustle game, nothing against the restaurant or the food. Just have more of it for 200 and something bucks a head. You know, I've done a couple of tastings where I'm like, it was too much. And like, I I honestly, they were small portions, but there were just so many that like, I, I actually felt like that, that I was full at the end. And if it was more, I probably would have like, I probably would have popped. Like, yeah, started. that's what we're supposed to do. So I'm the, all right. So, but you haven't been there yet. No, I would say try it if you want to like you know especially mm, Nick and, and Sam. Sorry, I do love Nick and Sam. Sorry, I can go. I can go there every night of the week. I love that place. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I would like to move on to our one of our favorite segments, Doctor Herman's Plastic Surgery 411. Let's do it. I have a pretty interesting topic, and what, also what's interesting about it is I'm actually going to be on Fox News Radio in a couple weeks doing some interviews about this. Okay. Because uh, it's a pretty interesting topic, and it basically revolves around. Does having plastic surgery have an effect on your marriage? It's a good question, you know? I mean, I know in relationships, like, Joey, I think guys freak out. You don't get anything done. Because they think you're going to look like some freak, right? There are people out there yeah. that have horrible work right. done. They, or they get too much. Or they get too much. Get too and much then I done. think, right. for the most part, men freak out and think you're going to look like that. Mm. And then I had to have the conversation of, like, you met me this way like I was a stripper. Like, it's weird. And so I'm <laughs> like, this is who I am. I told you, Dallas girl by trade. It's so, a job. I mean, as a plastic surgeon, like, I've heard both things. I've heard that, oh, you know, somebody has plastic surgery and suddenly their marriage is better for whatever reasons. And I've also heard the story of, oh, somebody had plastic surgery and suddenly they're divorced. So, um, you know, I think that probably the better question of, not, it, the question shouldn't be, does plastic surgery affect your marriage? It's do the effects of plastic surgery affect your marriage. And that's how I kind of like dug in this when I was like doing some research on it. And so there are some studies about it and there's no great study that's like, oh, if you have plastic surgery, like your marriage is bad or worse. I mean, there's a couple, I looked through them and, and I'm gonna touch on one. But what I started to look at is what are the claimed effects of having a successful plastic surgery? Now, of course, if someone has a plastic surgery and they get botched or like, you know, it goes bad. What's that big scar on your forehead? <laughs> yeah, then probably maybe botched. we're probably not gonna include them. But so I started digging into it and there was a study from 2009 of the Journal of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgery. And what it looked at is it looked at the, basically the effects of cosmetic surgery on both body image and self-esteem. 
And on both accounts, more with the body image than the self-esteem, but on both, there was a significant increase in how people looked at their body image and how they, they looked at their self-esteem. Further, there was a 2015 study by the International Journal of Emergency and Mental Health that looked at specifically um, self-esteem and cosmetic surgery, and it also found a very strong correlation. People that had cosmetic surgery had a noticeable increase in their self-esteem. And so uh, if you look at those factors in plastic surgery and you say, okay, well, how is that gonna relate to a marriage? Well, a lot of times such factors do improve marriages. So there was a study in 2018 of the World Journal of Plastic Surgery, and it looked at basically the patient scores in these different metrics of marriage. And it looked at people that had, didn't have plastic surgery and it looked and it did. And the ones that did have plastic surgery actually had some increases in some of these metrics, like fulfillment, like there was one about you know, sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. like just you know, feeling comfortable with your partner, so on and so forth. Yeah. And then it kind of broke down like, what are the effects that are causing this? And surpri not surprisingly, number one, self-confidence. Sure. If people are self-confident in their marriage, it does have positive effects on the marriage. And so you can see that bleed through. And now, I, I, please people, don't, don't take this as me saying, oh, go have plastic surgery, it's gonna save your marriage. This is not the conversation that we're having at all. Doc's also a marriage counselor. You know what your marriage <laughs> needs? Plastic surgery. No, no, nope, nope, not saying that. But. Um, but like, if you do want to dig into the research, there actually is a fair amount of research that shows that plastic surgery can improve uh, your self-esteem. Because a lot of people will have, you know how we are, Jasmine. Like, well, of course. People look at themselves and they're like, oh my God, I'm so, you know, whatever. You like, see sloth from the Goonies in the I, mirror exactly. and people are like, no. Well, yeah, well, here's what also <laughs> drives me absolutely crazy. When someone is talking about, oh, I want to get this done or this done, the most condescending grossest thing you can tell someone is ah, you really don't need that done you're beautiful just the way you are and it's like great yeah. you may it's struggle glossing, with that it's glossing over it's, yeah. but if someone like has something that they seriously yeah. are self-conscious about their mm -hmm. whole life and yep. it would make them feel better now again you've got to peel back the psychology of are you doing this because you want to be the better version of yourself mm -hmm. or are you doing this because you want to look like someone else? And that's a whole different psychology. Sure. But if you want to get rid of something that you've been self-conscious about, someone coming along going, well, you don't need that done. It's like, yeah. shut up. Yeah. I mean, shut I, up. I, I always like try to look at both <laughs> sides of it. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. You don't want to... It's like when you tell people, like, you know, don't be anxious, right? Like, right. it's a common thing that, you Oh, know, great. Let me switch like, it off. Yeah, Thanks. So glad anxious. I ran like, into you. Now I'm not thing, anxious it's anymore. It's the same thing when people have issues with their body. Like, you can't just tell them, oh, you know, it's not an issue. Because it's an issue to them. Like, you can't tell them it's not an issue. Now, I will tell you when I have patients come in, I mean, part of my job is to make sure that people are, you know, doing surgery for the right reasons. Because you don't want someone to have a surgery and not get the expected outcome. And then, you know, that's kind of on you as a so surgeon. So what are some things as a surgeon you look for psychologically? That's like a red flag. Uh, I mean, a couple things for sure, if like they're only gonna be happy with what's something they consider perfect. You know, that's something I always talk about with patients. Like, look, I can make you look better. or I know, And I'll say like on a degree, right? If somebody comes in, they have something I can make it night and day. I'm like, I can make this night and day. Uh, where I like get a little nervous is when, and I don't really have this happen very often because I feel like my patients are, are pretty even keeled. But like if somebody came in and like, I don't want to have this unless it's perfect, that's an alarm bell. Because it, it, it kind of like, it, it gives a feeling of body dysmorphic disorder where no matter what they have done, they're going to be uh, unsatisfied. And so, you know, a big job of plastic surgeon is to kind of like make sure that people, you know, don't have a true disorder that is why they're seeking plastic surgery. Also, people seeking plastic surgery for like what I call bad reasons, like, oh, I'm gonna have plastic surgery so my husband is attracted to me again. I mean, if you're having to have plastic surgery to make your husband attracted to you, then the I problem is not you. No, you probably it's, need it's to. It's like your marriage, right? He so, needs to probably go. You know, I mean, I've had people come in where it's like a husband and wife, and like the husband like is trying to like, I, I haven't had this happen in a long time, but in the past I've had, had it happen where the husband's like, oh, well, I want you to have this, I want you to have this, and like, I mean, I will kind of like stop the concept. Wait, he says that in the room? I've had it happen. Yeah, I have. It's not common, but like, you know, it's like one of those like really kind of submissive type marriages. Well, the stones on someone either way, Listen, whether it's man. the woman to the man or the man to the woman to be like, yeah, you should probably change that up a little bit. It's funny. Like I often, you know, oftentimes people what? bring their spouse or significant other and like the, 
you know, I see mostly women, but I occasionally see men. But sure. when the person is seeking surgery asks the spouse, what do you think? And the perfect Ooh. answer is like, whatever you want. Babe. Whatever you want, honey. Whatever I think you you're want, beautiful like, just the way you are. That's a good spouse. Yep. That's the exact right answer. Right. So, but I mean, you know, there are things as plastic surgeons that, I mean, if you're doing your due diligence and you're being a good doctor and a good plastic surgeon, that you try to make sure people are doing things for the right reasons. Like, sure. you know, um, because one, it's the right thing to do, obviously. And two, it's just good for you and the patient. Because if the patient has surgery and they're unsatisfied with their outcome, that's not good for them. That's not good for you. I mean, yeah, the surgeon made a few dollars, but like an unhappy patient, like is, you know, not something you want to have. Like, probably not, because then the Yelp reviews yeah, probably aren't the greatest exactly. if you... So the next, the other side of this coin is, you know, does plastic surgery lead to divorce? Now, that's the classic thing that you always hear is, you know, oh, so-and-so went and got plastic surgery and now like they left their husband or like they ran off with somebody or whatnot. And so- Oh, I have a story about that. Ooh. Well, I here do. we go this and we'll, I, I definitely want to hear it. Okay. So, um, you know, to, to dig into this, I started looking at what are the reasons that people stay in a bad relationship? And the number one reason that people stay in a bad relationship is related to fear and self-doubt. I feel attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> My 20s are coming out. This is not personal. All right, come on, Jock, lay it but, on um, me. But, you know, so you can start to apply the same things we talked about. If plastic surgery improves your self-confidence and improves your self-image, then suddenly you'll see people who start to overcome those fears of leaving a relationship that maybe they didn't want to be in, right? It's like, okay... I'm not going to get divorced and be alone forever because I'm a confident person now. And I'm not saying plastic surgery is going to make you somebody you're not, but it's the effect that plastic surgery does have that it can, it can change some of the things you're self-conscious about. It can raise your self-esteem. And that's why I think that sometimes you'll hear that story of so-and-so did these things. They feel better about themselves and suddenly realize that maybe that, deuces. Yeah. Maybe that they're not okay. to be in this relationship anymore. So ahead, I hear it. a friend of 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 a friend. <laughs> Cause I don't want people to do the math anyway. So, uh, she's in this like super unhappy marriage. Oh, I hate that. Terrible. Right. It was sad. very sad. Was openly cheating and like everybody oh, kind of knew. No. And the husband was like, no, I don't. And we're like, homie, signs. Here we go. Here's all the exhibits so A through Z. The, she was, she the was the cheater. cheater. Okay. And he was like, not. He was it? like, no, just blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, no, sorry. Oh, so man. anyway, um, he's like, no, we're going to, we're doing marriage counseling, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly, Doc, she wanted breast implants. Oh my gosh. And I, what I did know. he do? He's like, sure, honey, whatever. It's going to make our marriage work. Oh my God. And suddenly she happened. was getting piercings oh. and getting just tattoos. Took a turn. Okay. And I mean, just be dyeing her hair a different color, just really like just being young. And yeah. her, her clothing style changed a little bit. It was a little bit more, you know, risque. Not like overtly, but it wasn't like, you know, she was starting to show a little more skin now and tighter clothes. So it wasn't like stuff was hanging out, but it was more frame hugging. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're all like, come on, man. Literally the signs. Well, shock to everybody, plot twist. Um, spoiler alert, all of it. Um, she ends up like full on having a relationship with this other person. It came out in the open. And then she was like, yeah, I want to leave you. Aww. Leaves him. But here's the thing. He was paying for the fine tuning for new Still. homeboy to, well, because he paid for it all. Yeah, yeah. he's making payments it's on funny, his credit there's card. Like, there's actually some articles out there looking into lawsuits involved with when a spouse pays for plastic surgery and can they be remunerated for that after a divorce? And so I know that wasn't really what I was looking at, but I kind of was like, oh, this is interesting. And it, it comes oh, to find terrible. out that like, terrible. you can't. Terrible. Like, at least the, the articles I said or that I read showed that if, a sp if you pay for someone's plastic surgery and then you split up, like you, you don't get like half an implant. <laughs> no, you know, we take half that back. We're going to so, split it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was very interesting. So I'm really looking forward to doing those interviews uh, because I think that there's some really good things to talk about there and um, some good things to unpack. And once again, I would like to say that please don't go out and have plastic surgery to save your marriage. That's the wrong thing to do. I think that's what Doc was actually saying. I think it's not. All right, you know I love the Nip Tuck 911. Yes, you do. Plastic surgery news stories. So um, you, I, we're both on social media. Uh -huh. uh, we should mention. So yes. uh, we can find you on social media at, at Jasmine Sadry, S A D R Y. Jasmine like the flower. Aww. No Z's, no Y's, no crazy. Anything. So you, you were smart. I, 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 I wonder sometimes why I pick. I, so mine is at Dallas underscore Nip Tuck because I was like, oh, Nip Tuck the show, and I'm in Dallas. And right. I mean, yep. It's kind of. It's the same. Look. It's okay. Dallas I guess, Nip Tuck. But. All right, Travis. Don't forget can you the roll that video. Roll that video. Killed it in Stranger Things, and if you don't like Stranger Things, we cannot be friends.
So if I was Natalia's injector, this is what I would do. We start by treating those masseters, and we all know how much I love treating masseters to help slim the face. Next, I would actually add a little bit of chin filler just to help fill out her chin and make her whole face more of like a heart shaped. Next, I would add a little bit to the lips, just a little bit, nothing crazy, just a nice pout. And then we'd get in there and do a little bit of Botox. I'd give her a nice brow lift to help open up her eyes. And to top it off, we'd start working with some Sculptra. She does seem to have more thin skin, and we want to prevent that from getting thinner and create more collagen. All right, let's see what the final product would give us. Ta-da! All right, how do we like my Photoshop skills? As we can tell, her jaw is slimmer, her chin is more pointy, and her eyebrows are more lifted, and gotta love that pout. So, okay. that video hit TikTok this week, and that, so that's Miranda Wilson. She's a esthetician somewhere. I couldn't even figure out where she was at. And, and the person she was talking about was Natalia Dyer, who's from Stranger Things. Okay. So, so basically, she makes this video just kind of like, you know, unsolicited, saying this is what I would do to this actress, and the internet was not having it. There was She outrage. changed her whole, it'd be one thing there to was say. Outrage. It was crazy. Well, but it, because her, the 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 woman, ta the esthetician speaking, yeah. came off really ugly. There's a, there's a difference, bit, yeah. but no, a lot of it. You oh, changed this, you changed this entire girl's face. So yeah. basically she's like, she'd look prettier if she didn't look like herself, yeah. which is basically what she's saying. And so, listen, I think it's one thing to go, oh my gosh, she's got beautiful natural features um, already. But right. if she was looking at doing something like this, yeah, whatever. She, the presentation wasn't great. Terrible. But I, So you know how I am? I like to unpack stuff. So let's talk about what she was, you know, what she was suggesting. So the first thing that she said is she wanted to inject Botox into her masters to slim her face. I mean, I have a little bit of a problem but with that. But isn't that bone structure? Wouldn't you be shaving uh, off bone? Masters muscle. It's one of the muscles of mass. Of okay, chewing. but it looks like she's got jaw, right. like yes. bone. Yeah. It, Thank you, yes. So a lot of like the shape of the face is due to your jawline, right? And so I, I you know, I, I won't do that masseter Botox. Like one, it's off label. Like the, F, the FDA doesn't say that that's a, a, a um, oh, recommended yeah. use for Botox. But in reality, like softening up the muscle is not going to make that big of a difference. It will make your jaw, like those are yeah. bones, girlfriend. Your bones are so, not gonna go. I had a little bit of issue with that. Oh um, she was talking about doing chin filler. I, I'm not a big fan of using filler for the chin. Like in order to get a noticeable effect on the chin, you really need a lot of volume. So you're talking like thousands of dollars of filler to get like something that's noticeable. Otherwise it's like so subtle, it's like, why are you doing it? Like, if you really have... you would full on do an implant at that point, right? right? Yeah, you do an implant. And not that she even needs it. She doesn't it. need it. Yeah, she doesn't need it, right. Then she was talking about lip filler. Okay, so, I mean, lip filler, maybe. I right. subscribe. She has a beautiful... The actress has a beautiful sweetheart pout. Yeah, she So does. a filler would look great on her. Not that she doesn't... Ha she's beautiful she, as she is. She was talking about forehead Botox, but what really kind of turned an alarm for me is she said that it's going to give you a brow lift. Now, that's really not correct. When you, when you paralyze your forehead... It actually has a depression effect to your brows, but what she's probably meaning is that if you do Botox in the center, this will come down and you'll get that arched eyebrow look. I get a lot of people that get an arched eyebrow, but like just to like say it incorrectly like that kind of bugs me. And then lastly, she was talking about sculpture in her cheeks. Like I, I, I don't like sculpture. I use Voluma, but the products are very similar in that they plump your cheeks. But I mean, that's something that you use in people when they're older and they're starting to have to mid-face fall, which is what makes you... How old is this? I mean, right, she looks so like she's 18. So that's what I thought. So when I first saw this, I was like, this girl's like 18 years old. What is she doing? Well, come to find out, Natalia Dyer is actually 27. So, you know, she is a little bit older, which I, do, I think it makes a little bit of difference because... I'm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this because, you know, I like to play... You know, you know I like to play devil's advocate, right? Yes, so I'm going to yes, look at like, all of this. But... So, like, my concerns with this video were, one, the unsolicited suggestion that someone needs, you know, all these treatments. Like, if someone comes into my office and says, tell me what I need, I'm going to say, I, I don't play that game. Like, I'm not going to tell you what you need. You tell Let's, me. Why are you here? Like, tell Usually me what, people know what they want. But right? It happens to why me all the time. Why are you here? Like, I'm not going to suggest... That's a red flag. I mean, because that's to me, that's almost like, um, a, I mean, I don't want to say a conflict of interest. But well, like, it's subjective. It's like shady. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm the expert and I'm telling you, oh, Jasmine, you you have to have these things if you want to be beautiful. Like, that's just like shady. <laughs> I just, man. first like, of all, that's your first red flag. You probably don't need to be here because I'm not here to tell you what you need. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing that I have is like, there were some off-label uses of products that she was recommending, which I don't really like. And a couple things she like didn't, you know, say perfectly. 
When you say off-label, what does that mean? So, like, the Food and Drug Administration has three uses for Botox. Glabella, forehead, lateral eyes, right? So, to put in the masters an off-label use for cosmetic. Now, there are some on-label uses for using Botox in muscles. Where it's like, uh, for, like, bruxism, where, like, people are like, grinding their teeth. Like, you can inject Botox to soften the master muscles, which are a chewing muscle. So, it has a medical effect, right? But for cosmetic, that's an off-label use, meaning... Like, you can do it, but, like, it's not what the Botox company recommends you do, right? So it's, like, and there's a lot like that. Like the I lip, just, that's just concerning. I know. Put Botox in her lips. It'll make them big. Um, let me tell you what I do appreciate about this video, though. Okay, what? I think this girl did this on purpose. I, well, of course, because we're talking about it. Right. Like, I mean. Bingo, well, she won. Yeah, I mean, I, I think she really knew that it, this was going to cause, like, some huge blow up. Because, I mean, I looked at her followers on TikTok. She's got, like, 42,000 now. But I don't know how many she had before. But I guarantee you she has a lot more followers well, now. Well, and if I'm the actress, like, I'm sorry, no press is bad press. Because if you're talking yeah. about me, you're still talking about me. Yeah. So, I think... I, I kind of feel like the whole thing was a stunt. Now, she took the video down. I had to actually go digging to find this video. She took it down, and she actually put up an apology video, which I didn't even watch. But So, uh, yeah, I think that she kind of did this for publicity. And, and honestly, I kind of admire her. Like, I mean, you know, like, I mean, yeah, she's a bad guy for a week, and then and no one's going to remember her, and now she's got, like, all this publicity. Yeah. So, Miranda, I I'm proud of you. I don't know. Girl. I'm not going to you for any injections, though, because so, you're not even. Just to, like, really kind of <laughs> come full circle with my devil's advocacy here. Mm hmm I'm going to say what I, if she, if, if, what's her name, Natalie, Natalie uh, Dyer, if Natalie, mm -hmm. Natalia, if Natalia Dyer came into my office and said, what things might I consider? You know, okay, I think that that's what we're talking about. Like, you know, all right, she comes into my office, 27 years old. Like, I'm not going to tell her she needs this or that. But like, if she twists my arm and says, okay, what are things people in my age bracket might consider? I mean, the Botox, I think she's a little a little early, um, but, you know, there is a trend for younger and younger people to get Botox. I started at 26. Preventative. It's preventative, right. So, like, my wife has been getting Botox since she's been about 30 years old. Uh, she looks freakishly young. She doesn't mm -hmm. have a wrinkle, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, like, you look, saw her picture and I told her how told you how old she was, you'd be like, no, there, mm -hmm. there's no way. And some of it, you know, she takes care of herself. But, mm -hmm. I mean, the Botox is definitely playing a part. Yeah. So, I'm not against, like, Botox and someone in that, in that age. When bracket. it's done right. When it's done right, true. So, you don't yeah. look frozen and, like, yes, it has to be done terrified right. all that the time. That goes without saying. And then, like, the lip fillers, like, I would never suggest, oh, you need to get lip filler. But, like, it is a very common thing that people in their 20s get. I mean... I hate bad lip filler and like people that come in my office like look good and not fake. And and I think that that's okay. I mean, I think if you're, you know, in your 20s and you want to, you know, accent your lips or fill them a little bit, I mean, that's totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. The other stuff she was recommending, I don't know. Stop with the, the don't do fillers in your face when you're young. Yeah, I, I'm kind of against that. Ugh. But anyway, I, uh, I, I, I found that, that I saw that thing floating around on the internet. Like, I, you know, I'm on social media from time to time. And so I just saw a little bits piece. And then my friend Egmont, like he sent me the video. He's like, dude, you need to do a, you need to do a segment yeah. on this. And I looked at the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, we're going to yep. unpack that stuff. So we take requests. All right. Lastly, you know, I love at home treatments. I know you do. At home aesthetics. And I'm the cynic. All right. Well, I'm going to, I, you know, I've been like fairly positive the last couple of weeks about our at home products. Okay. This one, I'm a little lukewarm because okay. today we're going to talk about at-home scar treatments. Are they a slam dunk or scam junk? Oh, oh did you come up with scam junk? I did. You like that? That's so brilliant. I was like, this did is I why you're rip here. that off somewhere like unknowingly? Like, it's so good. May I rip it off? Slam <laughs> dunk or scam? I, did I come up with that scam junk? All right. So um, in the global market, scar treatments are a $12 billion, with a B mm -hmm. dollar industry. And as a plastic surgeon, like, forever, I've been really, I'm, you know, I'm a pessimist. I'm a pessimist about everything, about, like, these different products. Um, I've been a pessimist about scar treatments because, you know, being the doctor that I am, you know, show me the research, show me the research. And so when I got into plastic surgery fellowship, you know, 15 or however many years ago it was, you know, that's one of the things I started to look up is, like, do these scar treatments actually work? Because being a plastic surgeon, people ask you all the time, you know, what do I do and for scars? So, and it's dizzying. There's so many oh things out there. Oh, my gosh. It's, like, it's, overwhelming. It's, it is. I feel bad for consumers because there's so many products. Choice fatigue. And, and not only that, but, like, you know, 
these companies that make these products, like the ones that you know aren't all that great, will have these studies which make them look like that they work, but really when you dig into them, like they don't. Well, of course they're going to have to say, oh, 99% of the case studies. Mm -hmm. so, well, if there's yeah. two people in your sample size. So there are a multitude of products, and I just want to kind of list some of them out because people will be like, you know, you know, have I heard of this one? So there's silicone gel, both in sheets and a lotion. Um, in the Quai Mod, which I'm not super familiar with that one, Mitomycin C, plant extracts, onion extracts, which is what Moderma was forever. I don't mm -hmm. know if it still is. Green tea, aloe vera, and the one that you always hear, vitamin E oil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you dig into the studies on these, it gets really kind of nebulous. Like, okay, so like, are you talking about like scar slash stretch mark scar or just like straight up like no, a cut I would, scar? No, I would say stretch. So stretch marks are actually dermal scarring. So that's like scarring in the deeper layers of your skin. I'm specifically, that's a great question. I'm specifically talking about- Superficial. Yeah, super, like I go have a tummy tuck. I have a scar, I wanna make it look good. I have breast augmentation, I want my scar to be invisible, blah, 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 so on and so forth, okay? Um, because you do want to separate those because you, you wouldn't treat those similarly. You, you can treat stretch marks to some degree and we can unpack that one a different day. Um, but I'm talking specifically about surf, surface scars. So when you look into the research on these products, it's kind of like the classic bait and switch that we've seen with other products where they'll say, oh, this study shows that, you know, it should, you know, well, they say it, it has this effect. And when you dig into it, it'll be like a molecular model where like a certain thing like, you know, onion extract on a molecular level causes like an upregulation of like collagen, which, you know, increases the maturation of stars, blah, blah, of scars, you know, so on and so forth. But then when you actually look at the studies and say, okay, I'm gonna take this product and put it head to head versus nothing and see if there's a better outcome, that's where a lot of these products start to fall flat. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mean, I'm really kind of pessimistic about almost every scar treatment with one exception. There is one thing that actually works and that is silicone gel. Oddly enough, putting silicone gel over a scar does have an effect. Really? So like how, okay, so like unpack that a little bit yeah. here. So, so like there's, there's a couple ways that you can go about this. When I was like in my training um, and, and early part of my career, like the only way to do silicone gel uh, was to do silicone gel sheeting, which basically as it sounds, it's a sheet of silicone gel that comes on a backing. You peel it off and it's got a sticky side and non-sticky side. And you take that and you put it on your scar and you leave it on as long as, as you can. So if you can do it 24 hours, great, or do it 12 hours, like overnight when you're sleeping. And there's a lot of research that shows that it's very effective. It, uh, and one of the studies I pulled, which is a big study, showed it up to 86% reduction in scar texture, 84% reduction in scar color, and 68% reduction in scar height. I personally found those numbers to be a little extreme. I was kind of surprised to see that the study showed that much, but I mean, all of the studies do kind of agree that silicone gel does work. So how, I mean, it's not, is this for the rest of your life or no, like no. how so long? I, I tell people to treat scar. So if you look at like, you know, wound healing metrics, like when is a wound, you know, completely healed, it's around 90 days to where the strength of it is like as good as it's gonna get, which is around 90%, meaning if you cut skin, the repair is going to be roughly 90% as strong when it's all said and done. But the maturation of scars actually can go out to a year. Sometimes I've seen it even get better longer. So I, have, I tell people to treat the scars as long as you're willing to do it. If you're willing to treat a scar for nine months, do it. I mean, although I, I, mean, I, I temper that because like, you know, as, and the one thing I'm going to mention about scars is really all these treatments are one thing, but the absolute number one factor for how good your scar is, is how good it's closed. If yeah. you get cut and you go into the ER and you let like, you know, uh, medical student, you know, number one, sew you up, like it's not going to be as good of a scar as I do it. I right. mean, it's just not. someone who's professionally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, that's my, part of my whole job is to be like this super meticulous scar closure. And like, it was funny when I was in general surgery, like I just, I'm, I'm an artist at heart. Sure. And so I would do these general surgery cases. Like I do like a colon resection. And I'd be like, you know, sewing up the incision, like all, like they have this like midline incision. Like I would like take my time, you yeah. know, and like do this like really nice closure. And like people were like, you're going to be a plastic surgeon. And at the time I hadn't even thought about it, but like. Oh, I, wow. So it was yeah. just how meticulous you were yeah. with like the well, aesthetic. I just, I, you know, I just love the artistry of stuff. Sure. And like I went in wanting to be a heart surgeon. I was what? going to be a cardiac surgeon. Yeah. And then you were like, what if? Yeah. Well, it was funny. Like, and, and not to, you know, deviate too much, but like one my best friend, who's also a plastic surgeon, he wanted to be a plastic surgeon from the very start. And we went to college together and we went to different med schools and we ended up in the same residency program, but I was doing general surgery and he was doing ear, nose and throat. And he was actually the one, Dr. Jared Little, he's up in Louisville, Kentucky, he's a fantastic doctor. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, man, you should check out plastic surgeries. Like, you know, I think you might like it. I'm like, 
I don't know. Like, I always thought plastic surgeons were like the personal injury lawyers of the medical world, you know? How funny. It's like the, you know, the, uh, what's the Texas hammer guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm you're the Texas Brian scalpel Lumpur. guy. Yeah, I'm the Texas scalpel guy. So I had like a bad connotation with plastic surgery. Like, just, I don't even know why, but, you know, I did. I think because in pop culture, it just seems yeah. seedy because it's always the guy coming out in like a, what you might call it, the Miami Vice thin tie and his Lambo <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know. Right. You know, it's just, oh. it's, it's like that connotation. Yeah. Like, oh, he's and that's in there really to, me. I mean, I'm like, art, you know, I, I am kind of an artist. He has guy. the Lambo, just not the tie. That's oh, not. You know what I drive, right? I drive a big POS. No. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you drive. Oh, well, I'm going to bring in a picture. <laughs> I'm going to bring in a, all right, next episode, I'm going to bring in a picture of what I drive and you people are going to die. I'll do a little video of it. Okay. Um, anyway, so, um, but yeah, I did a rotation to it and I loved it. I fell in love. And so, yeah, that's how I became a plastic Okay, so can we get Dr. Little on so we can ask Ask him like we'll oh, ask man. him questions about you. Jared, come down, man. Come yeah, see me in Jared, here in Texas. we need to have you in here. Oh, I will moderate I, this. I, if Jared comes here, I'm gonna have to like have like a little shock thing on because he knows too many stories. Which about is me. fantastic. I'm gonna have like a little shock collar when he like. No, we need this. So like we were in college, we were fraternity brothers in college. Oh, so, brilliant, Jared, yeah. come on the show. We I demand the best it. Man at each other's wedding. I demand or, this. Like, the, uh, what is it called? The bachelor party. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. He knows too much. Which is brilliant. I take it back. No, but, uh, I'm yeah, gonna make so this happen. So if you want to treat scars, like I, I fully recommend using silicone gel. Um, so the gel sheeting was the kind of the old way. Now they actually have silicone gel that's a lotion. Okay, so what is a what is a favorite brand? So uh, I and use, how much is it typically? I use Biocornium. Okay. Uh, it's like B-I-O-C-O-R-N-E-U-M. Biocornium. Okay. It's a liquid silicone gel. It also has SPF in it, which another important thing for Perfect. making scars look good is not letting them get exposed to UV light. Tanning beds that, or yep, sun for a period of one year. Yep. If you get UV light exposure to a scar it can make it, it red. gets dark yeah so and then you've got the dark um, i like biocornium when my daughter but both my daughter and my son had these injuries on their face from various reasons and of course i closed them which i think really is the reason they look good but i did use biocornium and it helps that their dad's a plastic see, surgeon yeah you can't see any of their scar they had some really bad cuts on their face okay so where can we like amazon or do yeah, we have amazon. a prescription so okay. i used to actually carry a biocornium in my office and then amazon started carrying it and i couldn't compete with their prices oh no of so okay so how much how much uh, are we like looking a, at a tube like that's like 45 bucks okay or totally it's not, worth it it's, it's i mean it's like any other like crap gel yeah. scar that claims it'll like fix the Moderma scar. scar fades and they're a little bit cheaper in the far now some of those have come out with silicone gel versions like i just saw that when I was doing the research so that, that I think it's Scarfade has now a silicone gel, which would work, but mm -hmm. I still like the biocornium. So, yeah. okay. all right, Trovis, it's Q and A time. I got you. We I do. Do you. we have some? Last year, last week we got skunked. I we felt do. bad. We do. We have a couple questions. Um, the first one that we got from Facebook, uh, are the office treatments, uh, to make scars better? Are there office treatments to make oh, scars office better? treatments for mm -hmm. scars? Yeah, so there actually are. Um, we have a machine which is called Morpheus 8, which is basically microneedling and radiofrequency energy. And we use that one for like bad scars. Um, and it works very well. Also, I have a laser called uh, the Halo laser. It's by Cyton. I use that one more for um, um, acne scarring. And That's my next effective. thing. I've got but, pot marks. But both of those work good. The microneedling art radio frequency energy, which I use Morpheus. There's a couple versions. And then the Halo, uh, sorry, the Halo um, hybrid laser. Okay, so could we do, can we do Halo on me live during the show? Here? I couldn't bring the laser. Oh, we could come do it in on. my office. <laughs> I, you know, live a little doc. I live streamed me getting a Halo laser. My, so I have a laser tech named Patty. She's my nurse injector and also my laser tech. And mm -hmm. she's great. I let her do my halo laser live on social media just to prove which, to people uh, it doesn't yeah. hurt which it was fine and i have a high pain tolerance so i was like so yeah. do i but man i it, it'll took you a little bit good like, yeah well one thing amazing. too one yeah. thing too there's a second part of that question okay um should i have surgery to make scars better oh that's a good question so should you have surgery to make scars better well that's actually like a very interesting question so when people come into my office and they say i have a bad scar and like what should i do for it that is one of the options that i might offer them but if I'm looking at a scar and thinking, should this have surgery, then I have to answer or ask this question of myself. Do I feel extremely confident that surgery is going to make this scar dramatically better? Because sometimes people will come in and they'll have a scar that's like, you know, pretty good, but maybe not perfect. And then I have to have this conversation of, well, we can do surgery on this, but like this scar is pretty good. It, it, it might be is a little bit better. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Exactly. Like, I mean, is it so intense yeah. that a topical cream wouldn't? At that point, I might recommend something like the Morpheus sure. or a Halo Laser or um, doing, uh, you know, like some scar treatments. So mm -hmm. um, that is a good question. So 
We got time we for do. one more question, Travis? We do. All we right. Do. So, uh, next question I'm getting is, what age should people start Botox? Oh, wow. What a loaded question. 26. Next. <laughs> so, um, I, I think that it's very reasonable for people to start Botox in their late 20s because when people hit 30 is about the time that wrinkles start to become more noticeable. So, you know, in the old days, if you told someone in their 20s to get Botox, you'd have been like chased out of town with pitchforks and, you know, the plastic surgery community. But it has changed a lot over the years. And so now people are using Botox more as a preventative. Like they don't want the lines to ever pop up. And so I think it's a little aggressive if you start in your early 20s, but like, you know, towards your late 20s, like mid, mid to late 20s. Um, because if you do that, the lines that you would get, will never pop up. Right. And, and so again, it's preventative yeah. because then you can't be like 65 going, oh my goodness, fix it. There's one last thing about Botox and we don't say this to people as like a reason to get it, but I have found, and, and a lot of people will tell you this, <laughs> that if you suffer from headaches and you get Botox, you will absolutely notice a decreased number of headaches. Oh yeah. A girlfriend of mine for migraines does yeah. it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. sure, it's for migraines. I'm going to start using that too. Yeah. <laughs> One last question, Doc. Oh, another one? Yeah, uh, sure. One last question. Okay. Um, and this one is kind of like a, a messy question. Uh-oh. Um, have any of your patients got divorced after surgery because of the surgery? Oh, okay. Um, I, you know, Are you at liberty to say legally? Can you? <laughs> oh, I, as long as I don't say any names. Um, you know, a rhymes with, maybe? <laughs> I, I can't remember any cosmetic patients, but I can tell you a sad story. I had a lady that was a breast cancer patient. Um, so she got diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, had to have mastectomies. I did the reconstruction at the same time. Uh -huh. And, you know, during her consult, her husband was there. And then, like, about her second post-op visit, he wasn't there. And I was like, oh, your husband didn't make it today? And she proceeds to tell me he filed for divorce. And I was like, whoa. I was like, oh, my gosh. Do we like, have a bleep button on this show? Do we have a bleep button? We, we probably will have to like. We uh, need one for me because I was about to say yeah. some choice I was words like, about this person. I mean, you know, and it, it, you know, you, you never know what's going on. But like, man, I was like, that's kind of low. Like, kind of low. I mean, look, either she's really a terrible person, which I'm sure she wasn't. She didn't seem like it. Like, she seemed or very nice. But like, like, I mean, that's the just, odds are in the favor that this guy is a real, yeah, yeah a real piece of not work. good person, piece of something. But yeah, um, so so cosmetic surgery. I personally haven't had anybody that I know of like get divorced. But I that's the one story that always pops in my. I'll never forget it. Like and because I was just very casual. Like, oh, where's your husband today? And she's like, he filed for divorce. I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, there's a happy ending to the story. She ended up getting cured of her cancer, and we got Yay! her reconstructed. So I'm sure she's Yay! doing fine out there. And awesome. If, if you're out there, and I don't remember her name, if you're out there and you see this, you know, reach out to me and say hi. So yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, and if you're that, you know what, that did it, you reach out. I got words, too. <laughs> Jasmine's going to get you. All right. Well, everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching the show. Thank if you, you. want to follow us, you can follow us at, at Nip Talk Show for the show. Mm -hmm. Our personal social media is, for me, at Dallas underscore Nip Talk. For you? Mine is at Jasmine Sadri. All Pretty easy to remember. Everywhere. We'd love to see you. Please ask us some questions, and we'll see you next week.